We are now joined by Alex from Adjust. How are you doing today, Alex? All good, thank you. Have you had to do a talk so far during the show or are you able to just do meetings and hang back? Just meetings, I attended a few and uh, everything so far pretty interesting. Excellent. So if folks haven't heard of Adjust, what is it that you folks are all about? So Adjust is a more than 10 years old company now. We operate in the mobile space. So we are a mobile marketing analytics platform. What we do in a nutshell is that we help app developers, app marketers to measure, analyze, and also protect their marketing campaigns. So we offer a set of tools that they use whenever they want to understand the impact of those marketing campaigns on mobile. And we're also part of a larger corporation called uh, AppLovin, which is a public company in the US. And that offers also user acquisition and monetization suite of tools. So with this, we offer kind of like everything that a app developers or app marketers will need in their, um, let's say, scale. So you've got your hands on the stats. Now, yeah. we know for a fact that the amount of stats people are allowed to extract now have been dropped a little bit after the GDPR changes that kicked in and the companies have had to adapt. How has Adjust adapted to those new developments? Well, GDPR has been there for quite some time and especially that we, you know, we come from a, a we are a German company. So there is already this, uh, this uh, uh, mindset of like privacy first. So we've always looked at uh, making and building our infrastructure with like GDPR compliance in mind. I think where we got tested as well even more was uh, with the recent changes on, uh, on iOS and uh, ATT, SK Network, all the changes there also push, push the limits of, of privacy for our dev team and product team to, to look at and build solutions that are really focusing and fitting with this privacy era that we really. But it is tricky and people are obviously increasingly more cautious about the kind of data that they share. but. When it comes to attracting users to a new game or a new service or app, what is the best way of doing it these days? It's kind of a very open and golden question, but how, with a changing landscape that changes every six weeks, basically, how do you get people in at the moment? What's the method? Well, if we were to ask maybe like four or five years ago, there was plenty of companies that were selling user acquisition, monetization, I think the market kind of consolidated around a few players that are really strong in terms of technology. So of course you have the bigger platforms like the Google, the Facebook, Apple also growing like year on year quite a lot. But you also have like co companies like Apple in that also deliver in that space, deliver at scale and allow game publishers, game developers to also scale their game around that. New channels also coming. So you have consolidation on one side and you have also some newcomers on the CTV side, for example. So people spend time on mobile, but they also spend time on, you know, in front of their TV and like technology now allow to have a certain level of, of data and you understand where, what users are doing and watching at the same time. It's not like, you know, linear TV where you have a set program for each time of the day, you actually have more data on to what users are actually watching at what time of the day. And so we see advertising platform also investing a lot of like research and development and CTV advertising platform also taking a growing part of the, of the market share when it comes to acquisition. When a client comes to you looking for help, basically your services, they come to you and they say, look, we're trying to market our game to a particular audience or demographic and we've used this channel and this channel and it's not really working for us. What is the most common reason why it's not working? What are the mistakes that you're seeing clients making? I think over time, definitely, app marketers were more and more, you know, conscious and cautious about their, their spend. So what we saw in the very beginning was, and that's why also I just was in that space of like, you know, driving this idea of like everything has to be performance related, right? So you have cost per install and then you understand how much this install costs you, but like having all the events after the install where you understand how much people are spending, what are the purchases that they are making, how they are also being retained within the app because sometimes the value of a user is not necessarily only monetary, but it's also the time that they spend, the virality that they can bring also with them being in the app and sharing the app with others. So the mistake we've, been, we've seen and we're helping app developers to do is adding as many uh, set of KPIs that help them understand over time 
what is a valuable user. Some users might be valuable, and you can see that they are um, strongly retained at the very beginning, but they might monetize maybe a month after, you know? So that's always important to set those standards or set, set those expectations so that then you can say, I am spending maybe 50K on that channel, and it can relate to these business metrics that I'm looking to grow, you know? So the mistake we've seen is lack of, of planning and strategy behind those, the setting of those business metrics, but it's definitely becoming more and more common now. And we also offer some tools that allow to, you know, uh, have some more intelligence and preset of, of events, knowing that, you know, it's always pretty standard what app marketers might be looking for, you know? Right. And what about the years going forward? So in 2023, are there initiatives that you're rolling out? Are there places where you're looking to grow or expand? What are the plans? The plans are multiple. Like we have on one side, we are also seeing that right now with the economic downturn and like the situation in which a lot of companies are, there's a need for sort of like a consolidation of tools. So some companies might be using, you know, some tools for their analytics, sometimes data visualization, sometimes other part of their marketing stack. So we see that some of those companies will want some economies of scale and might merge some tools and have like something that is one tool to kind of like monitor everything, right? Rule them all, I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> after. Um, so that's, that's where we see and where we are investing also a lot of, of you know, time and resources. It's understanding what are the pain points right now in, in mobile analytics and try to consolidate those needs. So it comes from like bringing more data visualization tools, bringing some alerting system, bringing as well some automation in how customers are managing their campaigns because with less people in companies, maybe you will have also this uh, pressure on like they're delivering more with like the same set of tools that you have right now. So that's where we're heading on, on that side for like, let's say the, the set of tools that we have. Um, when it comes to privacy and all the, all the changes coming up, you know, Google, the privacy sandbox is coming. Uh, Apple is also developing even added features into SCAD networks. So we need to also be um, at the forefront of that and deliver as many um, tools that will allow them to have intelligence around that. So what we are developing system in is, you know, everything around predictive LTV, um, media mix modeling, because that's, you know, we go from a world where everything was more deterministic and it was, you had like a, a clear picture of where, what you had and what was happening within your app to something where you have less signals, but you still need a level of intelligence in order to take those decisions. So another part of our time is spent on building those set of tools that we, we believe will be also valuable for app marketers.